Hello my darlings, it's Zoe here and today I'm delivering another Darby story. It's been a little while since we did a Darby story and I hope you enjoy this one just as much as I enjoyed writing it. Because it took me only two hours to do so. <laughs> um, this one is saucy. I'm not lying with the title. I hope you like it. But before we go right into it, I would like to remind you to watch the video until the end. Like or dislike, comment something down below. This way, you can guarantee a better standing YouTube algorithm. Sharing the video also always helps. And uh, if you have any fan art you want to show me, I have a Discord link down below. Greatly appreciate fan art. Doesn't matter what. It can even be loot. I don't care. Fan art is fan art. All right, let's get right into it, shall we? There was a new drug on the market. Its name, Alice. The result of a quirk, your quirk. But it was far more dangerous than the drug itself. Your quirk, one mind, was an infection. Using your salvia, you could temporarily connect people to a hive mind. Despite being a separate entity to you, it was undyingly loyal to you, as your death meant its death as well. So whenever you did gave it to... So whenever you did gave it a form, you essentially had a zealous follower catering to all your needs. The drug itself was a highly diluted sample of your salvia with salt water. Drinking it would allow the brain of a normal person to experience the euphoria of being controlled by the creature without it being able to actually take motor functions of the person drinking it. Best of all, the only sign someone was on Alice was the borderline creepy grin people made whenever they were on it, and the fact that brain activity spiked drastically, a result of the hive mind trying to take control but failing. Usually going off the high meant that whoever took it was going to have a pounding headache afterwards. This meant that for a very long time you actually managed to stay underground. It was just you after all. Supplying the dregs of society for barely any profit. Luckily, it was still enough to rent a tiny apartment, and the few people who were addicted to Alice often came to visit. You simply considered these addicts as your normal income. Your problems began around the time you saw a news report about Alice. Crap, he had said out loud. You were panicking. So far, your operation was really, really small. It was unfair that you were already on the radar of the regular public. This was also the moment where you realized you needed protection. Using your addicts, you began to scout out potential people. And you were surprised when one of them returned on the same day, claiming to have found the perfect organization for you to become a part of. Somehow, this Alice addict skeleton of a man managed to organize an audience with you and one of the big players, the League of Villains. You were both excited and scared at the same time. A fear that got even worse when two days later, a day before you were supposed to meet with their leader, someone of their fold knocked on your door. You hadn't been expecting anyone, so you were in your underwear, when he barged in. Who, who are you? You asked, frightened, as he leaned against the doorframe. Name's Darby, from the League. You blinked in confusion. The guy had black hair and deep cyan blue eyes. Scars covered seemingly every bit of skin he showed. He was wearing a pretty sick leather jacket, and under it a white shirt, black pants and black leather shoes. But I'm supposed to- Yeah, yeah, he interrupted. Boss man sent me. <laughs> he chuckled darkly. Sadly not to kill you, at least not yet. He took a step forward and your entire body began to tense up. 
but that little goblin you had sent was hardly anything we'd care about. He paused and looked at the ground for a second, as if thinking about his next move. Honestly, I was expecting to stand in front of a dude. Are you Alice? Your eyes widen in fear. I... The... The drug is called... Alice. You told him your real name. And Dobby furrowed his brows. <laughs> Cute. So... About Alice, right? A light flickered up in your head. This was a pitch meeting. And if you failed, he would most likely kill you. So you wouldn't waste any more of the League's time. You shook your head before saying, The, the, the name Alice, well, um, I, I'm a fan of literature. And Alice in Wonderland, which is indirectly a story about drugs and all... You know... Dobby crossed his arms skeptically. So it's some LSD shit. You forced a smile. No, with Alice I guarantee no horror trips or flashbacks. You could feel your smile twitch as you took a step into your apartment. It was small, in the middle of the Dagobah district. If your drug is so great, why the fuck do you live in the shithole? You were offended. The pink paint on your walls had been expensive. The designer plushies that decorate your shelves and sofa even more. Looks like a goddamn dollhouse. You knew just what you needed to say. Well, this all had been your personal choice for decor. If you sold it to him as important... Yeah, that would work. You cleared your throat with a confident smirk. Well, it all comes back to the drug. Uh, you know, the room needs to fit with the theme. <laughs> Alright. I bite. He sat and now fully stepped into your room. Put some clothes on. I'd like a sample. You gulped. You had completely forgotten you were in your underwear. You quickly retreated into your bedroom, put on a clean white shirt and grey sweatpants, then you left the bedroom. Dobby was sitting in a relaxed position on your sofa, yet he still looked at you with an annoyed expression. You blushed. The... the drugs are in the bathroom. You muttered embarrassed, before quickly sprinting past him into the lavatory. There... You exhale deeply. Maybe you should have stayed in your shitty little office job. You opened your mirror cabinet. There you had a few bottles of salt water, some medicine bottles and measuring cups. Quickly you prepared a small shot glass of your quirk-enhanced water, almost fumbling and letting it fall to the ground. Who knows what he would have done if he heard that happening. With a metaphorical tail between your legs, you returned into your living room. By now, Darby had been on his phone. He quickly typed something before turning his attention to you. You placed a shot glass on the table. Should... should I stand? Or can I sit? He blinked. Why are you doing this? He asked with a bored undertone. P pardon you're too squeamish, too scared. I can practically smell that you're about to pee your pants. He gave you a dirty look. <laughs> a princess like you should be working at a bar and do favors for the regulars on the side for some extra pay. You blushed. I don't think you have the nurse for this job. Then he pointed at the glass. Does your shit... You nodded. Sit. He sat and you followed his order. Drink it. You shook your head. He said, drink it. He shouted. I can't. It doesn't work on me. You spouted. He gave you a surprised look and you blushed. Ah, so there is a little fire in you after all. All right. What do you mean it doesn't work? You sighed. 
Alice is the result of my quirk, and I have a biological immunity to it. I cannot get high from it. He blinked slowly. The fuck? You shrugged. Quirks, am I right? He laughed wholeheartedly. <laughs> the Germans think quirks are nature's attempt at advancing human evolution. You know, like, mutations. How the hell would a drug-making quirk beneficial to humanity and nature? Jesus Christ. You thought of your hive mind before you smiled. Yeah. Weird. Right? You never really thought about it, but with your quirk, you could become queen of a human ant hive. Huh. An idea came into your head. Maybe you did have the potential to become a villain after all. If the drugs weren't already an indicator. Darby leaned forward, taking the shot glass. What does it taste like? Salt. He blinked. Salt? You nodded. Uh, cheers then. He said after shrugging. He coughed as the liquid made its way down his throat. <coughs> oh shit. What the hell is this? Ugh, it's just salt water. He spouted. You leaned forward and gently pushed him back in his seat. D don't move too quickly, you said. The first time is very uncomfortable at first. The fuck are you? Oh, oh. He stopped mid-sentence as his lips curled up into that all-too-familiar weird smile. The fuck? I can't... I can't feel my lips. Scared he would hurt himself, you jumped off the sofa, removed his shoes before lifting him up onto a comfortable lying position. He inhaled and exhaled loudly through his open mouth. Holy... I feel... I feel good. You chuckled as you sat down on the armrest next to his head. Everything is so saturated. He muttered. I can see why your room looks like this now. He gulped and then burped loudly, as he probably was not breathing right. A result of first time use. How long. how, how long will his, like, hold? Uh, the longest reported by one of my addicts was two hours. Two hours? Hours! He shouted, almost like you just told him God was real. You smiled. Despite his scars, seeing him wide-eyed like a toddler was quite adorable. And you suppressed a giggle. Holy shit, Toga needs to try this, he muttered. Toga? He asked curiously. One of... Uh, one of my... Our members. Ugh. He groaned. Everything feels so soft. He began to slide his hands across his body, which you had to admit was kinda hot. How addictive is this crap? He asked. And this was the moment an idea came into your head. You got off the sofa and knelt down behind his head. Leaning over the armrest, you gently took his cheeks in your hands and moved your head to hover above his face, so you were the only thing he could see. Seductively, you spoke, as softly as you could, while his face turned red. Your body won't crave Alice, but your brain will. You were barely whispering. Your body won't crave Alice, but your brain will. You are barely whispering. The memory of your experience will float inside your brain for a very long time. While he was focused on your face, you let go with one hand and began sliding down his chest. You will simply choose on your own to come back to me. 
you will simply choose your own you will simply choose on your own to come back to me you put extra effort into making your come sound like come he groaned alice can lead you into her wonderland you said but for you to stay in it i need the protection and alliance with the league of villains you smiled softly can you do that for me with your fingers you brushed over his belly button you were willing to do whatever you could to make a powerful ally like the League. I wanna bang you, he said unceremoniously. And you were about to burst into laughter, but managed to keep it inside you. With a devilish grin, you lowered your head to his ear and whispered, I can make all your dreams come true. You snickered evilly. Especially since you aren't that bad looking, stud. If this was to backfire, it would really backfire. Which was ironic considering what his quirk did. You now moved down next to him and glanced at the rising tent in his pants. Do you want me to? You moaned. Yes, you shouted like a child demanding candy. You chuckled before jumping on top of him, your hands now rubbing aggressive circles into his chest. Then say it, big boy, you groaned directly into his ear. Say what little Alice wants to hear. I want you to fuck me. I want you to give me more of your shit. I want you to join the League of Villains. And that was all you wanted to hear.